Freedom Pop is a carrier believing the internet is a right, not a privilege. True to their word, they offer a completely free cell service anyone can sign up for. But what are the drawbacks? How is this all possible? What are the sacrifices being made to provide 100% free cell service? And at the end of the day, is it worth signing up for? Well, when you first sign up, it isn't free. Freedom Pop operates on the Sprint and AT&T networks here in the US, and no matter which you sign up for, there are some initial fees to get you activated. If you decide to use Freedom Pop on the Sprint network, there's a $20 activation fee, and if you decide to use Freedom Pop on the AT&T network, you must buy a $10 global SIM card, which for me took 7 days to arrive. For both options, it will cost $10 to port your current cell number. In my opinion, getting the global SIM card on the AT&T network is the better option. Coverage is better, the SIM card is cheaper, and yes, it is global, so it will work in other countries besides the US. Regardless if you sign up for Freedom Pop on the Sprint network or AT&T network, you will most likely be given a free trial of Freedom Pop's $20 a month plan with unlimited talking text and one gig of data. You will also give Freedom Pop permission to automatically bill you at the end of the free month trial, so it is crucial to downgrade your plan before the end of the month. To downgrade your plan, you will need to log into your online account. Hover your mouse over my account and click plans. Here you will see the $20 a month plan you were automatically signed up for. To downgrade to the free plan, click details and plan management, and then towards the bottom of the box, click the teeny tiny text reading to downgrade your plan, click here. Basically, Freedom Pop doesn't want you to see this and instead wants you to start paying $20 a month on cell service you thought would be free. You can see this with the amount of additional steps it takes to actually downgrade your service, including entering your account password and clicking confirm multiple times. To enjoy completely free service, you're also going to want to deactivate Freedom Pop Premium Plus, which you're also automatically signed up for. Go to My Account, Services, View Details, and then at the very bottom, in microscopic text, it says, to deactivate Freedom Pop Premium Plus, click here. Click the word here, downgrade anyway, and then downgrade and lose data. Now you finally have completely free cell service on Freedom Pop. So what do you actually get for free? 500 texts, 200 minutes, and 200 megabytes of data. This is 300 megabytes less data than advertised on Freedom Pop's website, which is a bit disappointing. Not only that, data speeds were some of the slowest I've ever experienced. The global plan I tested limited data to 3G speeds. I maxed out at 3 megabits per second down and 1 megabit per second up, but speeds were often slower than that. I considered myself lucky to get over 1 megabit per second down or up. Despite being slow, data speeds were actually fine for email, web browsing, Reddit, Twitter, and Instagram. Essentially everything text-based loaded quickly, with picture-based content taking a little bit longer to load. Music streaming was possible, but the songs sometimes cut out when data speeds were on the slower side of the spectrum. It was also possible to watch YouTube videos at 3G speeds, but I'd advise against it because the video quality was poor. In fact, to be honest, with a 200 megabyte limit each month, I'd highly suggest avoiding any kind of data use at all. Sure, you can earn more data by referring friends, but I really don't think this plan was meant to provide cellular data for anything besides talk and text. Which brings me to my next point, how Freedom Pop provides you with those free 500 texts and 200 minutes of talk time. To use your Freedom Pop number, you must download their free mobile application. You download the app, sign in, and then use the app to send texts and make calls. The actual SIM card has no phone number on it at all, as you can see from the phone settings. This was a major disappointment for me personally because it meant I couldn't use iMessage on my iPhone. Instead, I was forced to use Freedom Pop's app for all communication. And Freedom Pop's app, to put it politely, wound up sucking pretty hard. The bubble design is awkward, the person's name disappears and reappears as you scroll through the conversation thread, the back button appears to bring you forward in an infinite loop, the notification icons bounce in the most annoying way possible, the sounds are terrible,
group messaging doesn't work. And as you can see, you have to listen to voicemails on speakerphone. There's no way to just listen to them through the earpiece at the top of your phone. So I think this is definitely a bummer. But it's not all bad news for the Freedom Pop app. If you let your eyes glaze over the awkwardly large keyboard, the occasional graphical glitch in the status bar of the iPhone, and the bizarre text replacement graphics behind the keyboard, call quality is actually quite good on Wi-Fi, and its version history on the App Store indicates it is constantly being updated. That means it's bound to get good eventually, right? The bottom line here is to use Google Voice and Hangouts for all means of communication. In my opinion, the Freedom Pop app is complete garbage and should only be used for monitoring data usage to avoid any overage charges. Google Voice and Hangouts will provide a superior experience with a significantly more polished application and tons of additional features like voicemail transcriptions. Consider checking out my Google Voice and Hangouts review for more information. So at the end of the day, who is Freedom Pop for? I think Freedom Pop is for people who intend to use Google Voice and Hangouts for free unlimited talk and text. 200 megabytes of data is too low for web browsing and social media, but it's just enough to provide free unlimited talk and text through the Hangouts application. Coverage is strong on the AT&T network, and you have the added bonus of getting service if you ever travel abroad. Is Freedom Pop worth signing up for? I'd say yes, but again, only if your intention is to get free unlimited talk and text with Google Voice and Hangouts, or possibly some other messaging service like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. I definitely felt Freedom Pop had some poor business practices, like requiring you to enter your zip code and email address just to check coverage, automatically signing you up for $27 worth of paid services, and only providing 200 of the promised 500 megabytes of data in their free plan. But at the end of the day, it's free sales service with excellent coverage, and it might just be what people on a budget are looking for. Freedom Pop's $10 global GSM SIM card can be found linked below if you're interested in trying them out. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.